Good afternoon. It's a Sunday afternoon. Brad Keeble, a serial entrepreneur and CEO of Uptake, serial as in he's done supply chain companies, media companies, Groupon. We're going to talk about a lot of different industries today, acrobatics, trends, and so on. Brad, thank you again for joining me on the weekend. I really appreciate it. Tell us a little bit more about yourself and tell us about Uptake. Vinny, thank you for having me. It, it's, uh, it's great to see you. Uh, Zoom notwithstanding, it'd be more fun to see you in person. Um, and it's a pleasure to be here. My background is, as you mentioned, uh, in creating and building businesses, uh, a number of technology businesses over the last 30 years. Trained, I, I went to law school and business school, but I proudly say that I've never practiced law for a day. I have taken all that education and applied it towards creating software businesses, technology businesses that I believe have had impact, um, not, nothing quite as impactful on a global basis as uptake. So to your question about uptake, um, I'll sort of give you the, the, the basic framework and then we can go from there wherever you'd like. So uptake is a software company purpose built for industry. So we deliver predictive insights that are taking data from machines, from the people that interact, operate and maintain the machines and other sources. And we use all that data plus a lot of analytics to deliver stuff that's in the form of insights that can be acted on to those front lines of industry. So we are delivering ready-built, purpose-made, superior insights about what operators can do to get more productivity out of those machines, to be more impactful with the operations, more throughput, more velocity, more output. And then we help make sure that the machines don't break. So predictive maintenance. And ultimately, this all results in better safety and better environmental friendliness so that we can get the most out of the machines that we have with the least amount of waste, the least amount of pollution, et cetera. And these are really big, big machines, right? Wind turbines, locomotives. Uh, this, is not, this is not copiers. These are expensive. You work with utilities and railroads and oil and gas companies. And yeah, this is not... Um, it's not like toaster ovens and and uh, and copy machines. To your point, um, this is this is global industry that Uptake is built for. So some of our customers include the United States military, uh, to, as one example of deployments that help rolling assets, um, fleets, ensure that they're going to work. They're going to work optimally and they'll be available when needed. Another uh, series of customers are in the mining industry in the locomotive and rail industries. Yep. And in those spaces, let's take locomotives. We, we literally deliver a health score to the operators and the, uh, the deployment uh, teams around locomotives so that they don't put a locomotive on a mission to go from A to B, you know, from Detroit to Los Angeles, unless they have certainty that that locomotive is gonna get there without breaking. And then they help the operator understand how to better the speed and the activity of a locomotive so it can get there in an optimal time. So all of this is delivered in software that, that works, that doesn't require extensive configuration or lots of consulting firms. This is the new age of SaaS, which is vertically attuned, um, very rich data that is native when you're buying our software so that what you get is superior insight that you can act on immediately. It's a whole new concept. Great, this is, this is gonna be fascinating, Brad. I've been talking to a number of C-level executives about their industries and what I call acrobatics, you know, because we've seen all kinds of last mile supply chain acrobatics. We've seen obviously healthcare heroics. We've seen manufacturing, auto manufacturing firms try to jump into medical ventilators. Banks process 4 million PPP loans. I mean, the numbers are staggering, right? So you work with very, very complicated industries. They sound a little boring, but I'm sure you've seen some things that made you go, even though you are such a brilliant entrepreneur, I'm sure you've seen some things that just made you go, wow, I didn't think this was doable. Tell us about some of those. 
Well, first, let me, I mean, I appreciate the question, Vinny, because the, the first line of, of activity that I see is our own team, the team at Uptake. And the, the, the brilliant reaction and the, the, the somewhat heroic uh, level of passion, tenacity, and activity that I've seen from the Uptake team in service of our customers is worth calling out because I think great companies are fundamentally reliable, excellent, uh, uh, and, and um, th they consist of people that are trustworthy uh, in their execution. And I've seen Uptake as a team really, really thrive uh, when called. Um, our customers, you mentioned auto manufacturers, it's a good example. You know, we, our software is on the floor of auto manufacturers helping their machines op be optimized um, by the people that interact with them and then ensuring maximum throughput because a factory obviously is a series of steps and if one thing breaks, everything breaks. The acrobatics or the opportunity to use software and take data like a, like a, imagine if you go to the doctor, you want the doctor to say, tell me, you know, you want the doctor to know everything about you uh, so that they, that doctor can give you the perfect uh, prescription. Um, we are similarly almost a, a doctor uh, of machines and the acrobatics, if you will, that's happened amidst this pandemic is companies with an increased level of urgency. And instead of saying, as you would to a doctor, I might be sick, at an industrial level, what we're hearing from companies are, we must do more with the same, or we must ensure activity is reliable. So our, de our deployments on fleets, for example, for the Red Cross, um, uptake.org is our initiative to give our software to organizations that are serving society. Um, our deployment on these fleets helps the fleets of emergency vehicles work reliably and optimally. And similarly, we've made our software available to first responders in the supply chain, and it's been deployed in the midst of the pandemic to ensure that supply chain reliability is optimized. So all of this is a reflection of the value that shows up when software is purpose-built for a vertical mission, if you will, and our, our verticals of energy and oil and gas, manufacturing, mining, construction, locomotives, all reside on this one platform called Uptake, but that configuration has been so powerful in this time of great need. So Brad, you mentioned a couple of things. Let's, let's drill into a couple of areas. It seems like supply chains have broken down, right? Part of it is because so much was dependent on the Asia, Part of it is in the food sector, you know, meat packing plants have become a constraint. In the medical area, lack of knowledge of where the inventory was. It just seems like supply chains have broken down. Next time around, are people like you going to be called on to say, make sure it doesn't happen? Well, tell me about the opportunity. Because it, like, it seems like it's everywhere. Every industry has had problems. Well, it's a, it's a good point, Vinny. We're, we're in the business of industrial intelligence delivered through software that helps people do better, do the right thing to create better out, outcomes and outputs. The clarity of need of doing better with what you already have in terms of machines and infrastructure, the clarity of need of being a more reliable supply chain with a better understanding of velocity and, and, and potential uh, risk. That clarity is greater than ever. Greater than ever, not just from those on the front line, but the leaders, CFO, COO, CEO, board, they understand that decisions around enterprise software matter now more than ever. The days of ERP simply, hey, it just keeps the lights on, no. Those days are over. Now the question is, how do I know for sure that I'm not 92 or 93 percent productive? That I'm 99.9 percent .9 productive? And the answer is, companies like Uptake are built to provide that assurance of maximum productivity and maximum reliability. So the opportunity 
for better or worse, arises when the clarity is revealed that supply chains are a little bit too confusing. Um, and I, I've yet to hear somebody in the supply chain world say, you know what, I'd rather have less information than more. In the world of supply chain, when you can explain and propose that software can make the supply chain more understandable, more reliable, and therefore increase the velocity and decrease risk all through software that just works. You don't have to hire a consulting firm to make it work or hope it works, it works. That, that's an easy decision now more than ever. And that's the business we're in is selling software that actually can be plugged in, deployed and simply work versus you know, a big project that might be written off if something goes wrong. Well, you're gonna have your hands full, but let me throw out another opportunity for you. You know, I live in Florida and we are used to the National Hurricane Center. The cone of uncertainty has become smaller and smaller. So we evacuate maybe 200 miles when a hurricane is approaching, right? We don't evacuate the whole state of Florida. It seems like in the pandemic modeling, it has been chaotic. And we have just shut down huge swaths of the economy and then said, oh, sorry, we miscalculated. You know, let's turn Javits into a hospital. Four weeks later, oh, maybe we don't need it. I mean, it's just been almost shameful, right? So what, what, what's broken down? What, what can be improved? Well, as somebody who really finds behavioral uh, economics and, and human psychology fascinating, What's broken down, if you will, is that people are not always the best actors on possible risk. We tend to underweight risk and overweight optimism until we then the risk until the risk manifests as reality, and then we overweight our response. This is where great leadership helps appropriately address problems. Okay, so in the in the case, let, let's not even go into politics, but we'll stick on, on, on industry. In industry, great leadership looks at the reality that's been presented through the pandemic and perhaps says, you know what? I don't want ever to be in a position of reactivity in terms of my enterprise. I wanna be proactively clear about the risks and about appropriate mitigation and response ahead of time so I can model and anticipate and almost practice what I'm gonna do if something happens. That's available now if you're willing to have clarity that action must be taken. I'll get more specific. Let's just take that example earlier about a railroad. You can, as a railroad operator, understand every everything about the machines, the, the, the locomotives and rail cars, the track, your operators, and the missions. It's all now available because the data now comes off sensors across that landscape and companies like Uptake are built to take that data and deliver precision insight about risk. So you can address that risk ahead of time and proactively make sure the parts are there, the speed is right, the operators are appropriately doing their thing. Now you can choose to not take that action of a small, clear investment in software in exchange for better clarity. You can, you can just avoid it. But more than ever now, it'll be clear that you avoided it because you can understand proactively, predictively, what might go wrong and how to address it. And so the ability for leaders, uh, for decision makers in industry, to take data and use enterprise software to accurately and predictively address uh, risk and, and optimize the opportunity is now here. It'll be more noticeable if the choice is, eh, we'll do it later. So in other words, the investment in, in sort of maintaining ERP and, and big consulting firms with big engagements just for maintenance of, of an okay status quo is no longer a better choice than um, a smaller, more clear investment in optimization. I think optimization is now a priority. So, you know, you picked on the big enterprise software guys. You picked on some of the outsourcing guys. It's always been elephant hunting, right? It seems like no CFO is gonna approve a three-year project, right? And no facilities manager is gonna say, sure, send me your school bus with 50 consultants to my facility. So it seemed like the time is right for both 
the enterprise software industry and the outsourcing industry to say, guys, whether we like it or not, we have to change. You think that's going to happen, or are going to, people like you going to have to still show the way? Look, I've, I've read a lot of what you write, Vinny. So um, <laughs> you would think that the buyers, the CFOs, COOs, would not would no longer tolerate write-offs and the possibility of taking huge risk and then something doesn't work. You would think that the demand for software that does what it's supposed to do, that's built for the purpose and therefore can be deployed as clearly as you would deploy a, a consumer app on your iPhone, deploying it so that it works with clarity and no risk. I mean, you know exactly what you're buying that software to do and it does its job. You'd think that that would now be a demand. And my response is, it is more than ever. In fact, while I mentioned some of these um, uh, consulting firms, a lot of them are now coming to us and uh, signing up to be deployment partners for us. But the deployment is so much more simple now than it used to be. And the customers are buying software that works. Um, they're no longer buying an, a, 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 an ERP framework. With Uptake, they're buying SaaS, purpose-built, vertically specific software that delivers superior insight, which we haven't really talked about that much, but you know, what's the special sauce of Uptake? Yes, it's built in a way that SAP, Oracle, and others are not built. We're built specifically around time series data, around model-driven architecture around low code and no code apps that, that are driven by AI and machine learning insight. And what's unique about Uptake is we aggregate insight from so many industries so that objectively our insights are superior in efficacy. You're not hoping that they're superior. We are delivering and proving and demonstrating superiority so that when you plug it in, you benefit from uptakes, superior data-driven insights. That's unique. It's, it's radically simple. It's radically tangible. And yes, our job is to communicate that clarity. And now it's easier than ever because the, the need is more articulate than ever. Brad, you're always so positive. Where do you, where do you get the inspiration from? Tell us about, is it mentors? Is it spirituality? Is it family? Uh, you are in Davos. You go to Davos every year, it seems like. Is it hobnobbing with other leaders? Uh, tell us tell us where you get your inspiration from. Well, it's, first of all, it's, I'll tell you, it's not hobnobbing. I mean, um, but I pre, I, my inspiration at its core comes, or my positivity comes from my orientation as an entrepreneur. I mean, my, I, I suppose you could say an entrepreneur's job, at least a, uh, any entrepreneur that deserves at least some amount of respect. Uh, the job they play in our society is noticing, seeing, and leaning into blind spots and turning that blind spot into an area of opportunity. Okay, so my optimism is because I see so much opportunity so clearly. In terms of uptake, my optimism is even more magnified because the ability for software to take the world's assets and make them more productive and therefore require less waste and, and, um, and, and, and in essence, move up the scale of productivity without requiring necessarily more and more power plants or, yep. or infrastructure projects, uh, that's spectacular. And so what really drives me and I think drives the uptake team is the ability to matter in the world and to do it in service like as as, as service as, as a service company we are in service humbly to customers who can buy our software and themselves be better so you know it, it's a real deal we we have joy and delight when our customers can do more with the exact same and can have people that get more done and so that to me is my sincere inspiration Brad, I remember you saying you went to law school, but you didn't practice. You had a mentor. You've had a mentor for a while, right? Uh, is that mentor still in your life? Still guide you along? Does that yeah. 
I've been, I've, spoke, I've been outspoken about mentors. I, I was fortunate um, to, to meet a man named Sam Zell when I was 17 years old, maybe 18. Um, no special relationship, no family kind of connection. I was in, I, I heard him speak and I went and introduced myself after and, and he saw me for something um, special, which I, I don't know, I don't know why, um, I don't know what he saw. All I know is he saw me for who I wanted to be even more than who I was. And, and he, without saying these words, what he, what he opened up the door to was a mentorship type relationship, a mentor relationship. And now it's 33 years later and, and Sam is still, he is one of my closest, most important mentors that I have. And having been the beneficiary and it's not about him investing in my companies or anything. I mean, this is a pure mentor relationship at its best. Um, appreciating that as deeply as I do, I've consistently been more interested in learning than knowing. Um, or, 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 you know, I prefer curiosity as a growth edge uh, over like telling you what I know. Like I want to figure out what I don't know. And I've added more and more mentors over the years and now I'm fundamentally paying it forward to so many young people who I mentor. But to me, that's what life's about. It's taking what you do know and figuring out um, what that next level looks like. And, and, you know, after so many years building software companies, some of which you've mentioned, Uptake, when I had this idea about an entrepreneurial driven platform that was uniquely purpose built for the complicated time series, model driven architecture that's required to deliver great software to the front lines of industry. And I said, you know what? It doesn't make sense that a, a maker of machines, an OEM, uh, would build it because what needs to be built is applying to all makers of machines. And it also, I know technically that the big players in ERP have foundations that are not built for data integrity at a time series level that must be the input for actionable insights. So the usual uh, sort of, um, you know, the old school usual suspects are not built for this. And those that understand machines have bias because they understand their machines, not the operator's machines. So the place for an entrepreneur in the world of industrial intelligence, enterprise software seemed clearer than ever. And it did require the curiosity to say, yeah, I've gotten a lot done and I built a lot of companies, but this really takes that experience to the next level. And that's what uptake really is. Great. Well, listen, you, you, you know, you're a polymath, you're a lawyer, you're an entrepreneur, you're everything. You're, you're, Pull out you're the nice. economist, economist hat. Do you see a V recovery, a sharp rebound? Do you see a gradual U recovery? Do you see a W up and down, you know, flare-ups, you, regions? You, you, start, what, you start. What do you, what do you see? You know, I'm a, I'm a, the optimist in me says this can be a V. There's already a V in a couple of sectors. Um, but then I see a couple of sectors where it's going to be an L. So I, I'm, I'm heading towards uh, averaging it out to a, sort of a, not a, a long U, kind of a shortish U. Hmm. But I'm seeing a couple of sectors that are just, that are just, I mean, like housing, mortgages. I interviewed a guy who sells to the mortgage market. My God, it's on fire. The whole refinancing market is on fire. I said, you know, I asked him, how do you close? How do people close? He says, they're going into garages. They've got a notary sitting in the car observing and they can notarize based on that. I mean, it's just like people are doing whatever it takes to, to, to close, right? I uh, interviewed the CEO of a small bank, community bank. He said, Vinny, we have grown 25% in a month. The big banks fumbled the opportunity. We jumped on it. I mean, he's closed like thousand loans, PPP loans, in a month. So, you know, some sectors are on fire. Um, for Delta, on the other hand, you know, I interviewed them. He said we're Delta Airlines. I interviewed the CIO. Five percent capacity. You know, so it's uh, it's very. You know, William Gibson had this 
has this code. The future is here, it's unevenly distributed. That's a great statement for the time. We're seeing a recovery, but it's very uneven. That's the, everything you just said is interesting. What you said la last, the la that last comment is, it, um, lands pretty true from my eyes. The confusion, I'm someone who looks for the mental model behind the facts that are showing up. I, um, if you're committed to learning and understanding, at least for me, it's easier to figure out what pattern is playing out, what model is uh, uh, underneath what you're, what you're observing. And, and I have the luxury of some pretty amazing mentor relationships, one of which I mentioned, but there are others. And the thing I know for sure is that not much is known for sure. The thing I also know for sure is there's some disconnect between the stock market and some of the industry uh, activity you're describing and our population, at least in America. Sure. And that's confusing because there are consequences to printing all this money um, and printing trillions of dollars absolutely creates low interest rates and allows corporations to refinance debt in a time of bizarre economic activity. And then what? And there's so many then what questions that arise. Um, so I, I, I agree with you that there are certain industries based upon what is playing out. Like I believe, for example, that certain industries that, that will have quick recoveries and that fundamentally haven't suffered that much. There are others that have been decimated there's a toll that that takes on a society. And there's a toll that that has to, you gotta pay the, the toll uh, at the economic level. That is where I think even the smartest recognizers of patterns haven't seen this before. We've never seen a printing of money at this, on a relative basis at this volume ever in the American experiment. That's interesting slash challenging. And at the same time, the thing that I've learned that I believe for sure is that technology that helps human beings be, get, and live healthier is unarguably valuable. It creates value. And enterprise software that helps industry, the industry that supports the way the world works, it helps industry operate more effectively, reliably, and productively is unarguably valuable. Those are two sectors that I think for sure have value, which is enterprise software that delivers outcomes to industry like uptake, and then software that focuses on a more healthy human uh, uh, race, that's also valuable. Brad, you're always inspirational. You're always just, you know, just full of ideas. It's always fun. Thank you so much. And look forward to sitting down face to face one of these days if they ever, ever let us get on a plane. Thank you, Vinny. That's my same d desire. I'm ready to start <laughs> interacting in person and feeling, feeling your energy of positivity as well. So thanks. And a, a real pleasure to be on, on, on your podcast, on your Zoomcast uh, uh, series. So thank you. Thank you very much.